Deborah Trevelyan. China's efforts to suppress minority cultures within its borders have been well documented. Muslim Uyghur people and Tibetans have discovered how difficult it is to maintain separate identities. Now, with a new clampdown on the use of the Mongolian language in any form of state education, dissenters are gearing up for a battle in the northernmost reaches of China. Leaked documents suggest the central government plans to enter a final phase of what critics see as a decades-long attack on the culture there. Enkbat Torchog is a human rights campaigner and Chinese-Mongolian exile in New York. He's in regular touch with friends and family in what he calls Southern Mongolia in China. What's happening in Southern Mongolia uh, now as we speak is uh, a region-wide civil disobedience resistance movement uh, against the Chinese central government renewed attack on Mongolian culture. Almost the entire Southern Mongolian population is standing up against this new policy, from kindergartners to top intellectuals, from middle schoolers to college students, from ordinary herders to rural villagers, and from company workers to even some government officials. All walks of uh, Southern Mongolian societies are rejecting the new round of language policy which uh, many see as a cultural genocide. According to the most recent information videos and pictures we received this morning, almost all Mongolian schools and classrooms are empty. Despite the government push for early registration, Mongolian parents are organizing themselves and launching a total school boycott. And many are proposing to carry out a synchronized region-wide demonstration on September 1st, which is the official starting day of the new academic year. This is quite a brave stand to take, isn't it? All these people must know how badly Beijing reacts to disobedience. All Mongolians are aware of the the risk because they consider the Mongolian language is their last stronghold of a national identity. So they are risking their life, risking everything to protesting against this new round of uh, cultural genocide. I know that you're bilingual, in fact, you're trilingual, but tell me how you feel about your Mongolian language. I was born in Southern Mongolia, raised in Southern Mongolia. My native language is Mongolian. I spoke Mongolian in my country and my family, and then I learned Mongolian in schools, and then even in the college, I, I was majoring in Mongolian literatures and uh, language. So this is our real symbol of national identity. Southern Mongolians have already lost their national independence. They already lost their autonomy, political autonomy. They already lost their um, traditional way of life. Their environment is destroyed. So the language is the last, last stronghold of national identity. The language looks very different from Mandarin. How different does it sound? Give us a feel. For example, in in the Mongolian, for example, my name is Enkma Torchik. I live in New York City. Weather is nice today. Temperature is uh, 22 Celsius. Uh, Mongolian, it will be like Namak Enkma Torchik Dik. I'll be New York Hotten Dem Dijuan. I'll be New York Hotten Dem Dijuan. I'll be New York Hotten Dem Dijuan. If I say it in, in Chinese, it will be like it is a very different sound. Do the Chinese authorities want to eradicate this? Is, is that even a possibility? That is uh, pretty much their goal. They clearly stated in some documents that are leaked by the local authorities, uh, stating that uh, the goal is to completely replace Mongolian medium education across southern Mongolia in all Mongolian schools uh, with a Chinese one uh, starting this uh, September. You've seen what happens to political protests. You've seen what happens to the Uyghurs, to the people who are protesting in Hong Kong. What kind of precedent does that set to you? The crackdown and suppression is around the corner, but uh, southern Mongolians have no choice but to fight back. Enkbat Torchog, who's a Chinese-Mongolian exile in New York. This is the BBC World Service. This is the BBC World Service.